Right. How did an American end up with 1.4 million photographs of New Zealand? Well, we're about to find out. Joining me now is Daniel Miller, the man behind the Fear Facts Archives. Good morning. Man, how are you? I'm great, and welcome to New Zealand. Thanks for having me. Today, can I just start by saying you're very generous to come in and talk to us about this, because today, yes. what is happening? I, I'm getting married. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, thank you. Congratulations. I'm getting married this afternoon. Thanks a, very much. A beautiful, small, but beautiful ceremony this small, afternoon. Small, beautiful ceremony. We're not telling anybody where it is. Exa well, we won't, we won't do that, but yes. congratulations. Thank and you very thank much. Thank you for giving up your morning on your wedding day to come and talk well, about I'm this. Well, I'm thanking to my lovely Kimberly yes, exactly. to, to allow that to happen. So. Um, but I know how passionate you are about this. Yes, so tell sorry. me about the Fairfax archives, first it, of all. What, what is it? It's a very strange story. Fairfax Media owned a bunch of old photographs they used for their papers a long time ago, from the, from the 1800s to the late 1900s. Those photographs they agreed to have digitized by a guy who came who is a bit of a con artist that came to, to say he's going to digitize them in the U.S. It got, they got caught up in fraud and a bankruptcy. It's a drama worthy of a, of a TV miniseries. So these photos got caught up, and the, uh, there, was a bank, there was a bank that was owed 14 million U.S. dollars against these. They pledged that, 14 million U.S. And it was easier for them to just put these in landfill and write off the amount on wow. their taxes. And so at the very last minute, I got a call from the receiver from the bankruptcy, and they said, could you come and could you do something? And I was a little reluctant because it's 47 tons of paper. 47 tons. Yeah. So the story's been widely misreported, but the fact is at the end of the day, we saved them. We rescued them. We saved them. Uh, this is, um, these are some of the photographs here Very that we're crumbly. seeing on screen at the moment. So these are, these are historical photos that show a slice of life here in Aotearoa, in New Zealand. Yes, yes. And what we're doing to subsidize getting many of these back to museums and libraries, we're doing some auctions. And you'll, what you see on the screen now, many of these are auctions of uh, uh, Sam Hunt, fantastic poet. This guy was great. He would go out and share poetry th with young children in schools and turn them on to poetry. And how many kids know about poetry? They don't. But he was cool and he was fun. And he's still around. I wish I could uh, meet him. That is a lot of photographs to have to go through, but you've had a team working pretty diligently to go through every single photograph, right, and figure out what it is. It is one at a time. And, for example, this particular auction we have of literary people, we picked through 12,000 photographs to find 229. Wow. Yeah, that's about a week and a half of work. So who are you hoping will, will, will take these photos, will, will get a hold of these photos? Well, they are, they are actually, uh, uh, how would you say they're, they're actually one-of-a-kind pieces, historical pieces. Mm. Now, luckily, the museums and libraries in New Zealand are really have great holdings. About 10 million similar photos exist already among about 35 museums and libraries. So luckily, it's not cultural heritage to a point, but these are unique cultural artifacts. So these are one of a kind. Often what's on the back of the photo is as interesting as what's on the front, what's printed on the back, because when it was printed, where it went, what the story is about, perhaps it's a newspaper slug, maybe it was run many times. This can be very interesting. Um, did you have much of a connection with New Zealand before uh, you got your hand on these photos? Uh, no. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, our first pass was the Sydney Morning Herald. We acquired that about four years ago, and then after that, we, I looked at the New Zealand work after that. We discovered some of it sitting in an outdoor storage locker in Auckland, growing black mold. Wow. These things were so poorly maintained. Now they're, I call them, they're in a photo spa now. So we have a uh, acclimatized building. On my phone, there's an app. It was 41% humidity before I walked in here. So I can tell they're, they are in perfect condition. And we're just waiting great homes for them, for all of them. It was a, um, it, because of the amount of photographs, because of the sheer volume of, of these photographs, it was hard to find one, one specific auction house that could kind of handle the volume, right? No, we tried, we tried, we tried. But it's such an insignificant thing for the average auction house that we had to open our own auction house to be able to actually do it here. So we have our own New Zealand auction house that we created, the fairfaxarchives.co.nz. And, and um, in, in doing so, we're going to be able to actually 
get some of these artifacts into the hands of the average New Zealander. Now, people misunderstand. These were privately owned before. They're privately owned now. We had to buy them for a significant sum of money. So as much as I'd like to donate many of them, it's difficult for us to do that. So why did you do this then? Because as you said, when the, when the, when the banks who were dealing with this insolvency, with the bankruptcy, um, got their hands on these photographs, they, they, it probably would have been easy for them to just get rid of them and to throw them Far out. Far easier so, for them to do that. And probably easier for you as well, Daniel. It's so a why bit of an you, adventure. So why have you bothered? <laughs> well, I think I saw the history of a country. And, I, and I, I've never seen, I've, I've seen many archives before, remember the intact history of a country that was going to be demolished. And it just seemed like the very wrong thing to do. And I didn't know what to do or how to do it, but it just seemed like the right thing to do. So, and you know, we're stumbling as we go. We're trying to figure it out. We, we have work, uh, I think, Gulf New Zealand just acquired some of the original golf photographs wow. they've never seen before. Wow. I brought some by and there were important matches in the 1930s and 40s they'd never seen before. It, that feels so good. I mean, that we're able to actually get this into the hands of New Zealanders, not in some institution, but into the hands. And of, of any New Zealanders, is this, is this kind of open slather for anyone to be able to take part in this auction? Anyone can bid. The prices are very reasonable. Okay. Very incredibly reasonable. Right. Starting at, I think, $150. Amazing. Mm. And now, for mm. someone who had really didn't have any connection to this country, you clearly uh, feel incredibly connected. Well, it's my fourth time here. We're taking a, a drive down south, so that be, uh, should be interesting. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, lo I, I love it. Well, uh, thank you for being here, and good luck right. for the wedding today. Thanks so much. Uh, and good luck for the rest of the trip as well. Appreciate that. Uh, that's Daniel Miller from the Fairfax Archives. And if you, are, if you are interested in taking part in that auction tonight... It closes at 8 o'clock tonight. closes at 8 o'clock tonight. You can yeah. head to thefairfaxarchives.co.nz. We'll put a link.